Hello, welcome to our first math lecture for this YouTube channel for Scientific Mathematica. So the so first thing we're gonna be going to today is one of, is one in my particular most fascinating mathematical topics in my opinion. It, this is the Riemann zeta function, which looks pretty complicated at first. This infinite series, as it looks. Let me finish writing this. One K N K one. But essentially you don't need to know algebra two or any of the higher maths to understand it. Cause this equation just literally means one over one to the n power plus one over two to the n power plus one over three to the n power and so on and so on and so on all the way up to infinity which is the Riemann zeta function oh, freaking Riemann zeta function which which is part of the re which is the equation used for the Riemann hypothesis which is a millennium problem, which I'll probably be explaining in another one of these videos. The main thing that will be interesting about that equation from before, the, the 1, 1, n plus 1, 2, n plus 1, the n, and so on, so on, so on. As the fact is if we set this equation we set n equal to negative one, we get the equation s equal one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven all the way on to infinity. Most people would say easy. How, well does the equation equal? Well this supposedly should equal infinity. Well that's not the case. The real answer is something that will blow your mind. So to prove that absolute, that absolutely uh, like incredible answer, to start, we're gonna times this equation right, this equation right here, by four. So s equal one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six times this by 4 and we get 4s equals but we're going to rearrange this something differently but it still works because we're going to put an imaginary 0 here so we get 4 plus 0 plus 8 plus 0 plus 12 and then we subtract right here we get negative 3s equal 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6 and then so on and so on and so on you might think like, why did I set this equation in the first place? How is this going to help me solve this any better? Well, this equation leads, is actually equal to, to this equation right here squared. So this right here equals 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 dot dot dot, dot squared. If <laughs> you're like, how's that possible? This doesn't look like anything to be related. But first, let's figure out what this series even equals. So this series that I just showed is called the Grande series, which has these repeating 1 minus 1 intervals. Grande series. Which looks particularly confusing, but in order to, there's two ways. The first one is a proof, and then the other one is a formula. So this one, proof of, we're using this thing called Cesaro sum, which is basically like taking the averages of a series. So we know the answers of this equation. I'll alternate from 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. If we solve the equation now. So the answer is always one zero one zero one zero. 
but or to solve it like most people just assume that this thing is can't really solve it because there's no like answer that sticks on or like point that converges we could use Cesaro to sum and average it out so instead we get one the average of one divided by one and then we get one two numbers so one divided by two which is one half and then by following that logic we get two thirds one half three fifths one half and then you get the point so then we could see that the occurring number is one half so that means this and if we keep going on infinitely you're going to see that this of this cesaro sum eventually converges on and on and on and the cool thing about cesaro sum is that it doesn't converge you get cesaro sum the cesaro sum and then you get, which gives some pretty interesting results if it doesn't converge already so now we do know this one half here's the second proof if you don't believe beyond the other one so first we're going to take a look at infinite geometric series which sounds confusing but to be honest this isn't that bad so the equation for infinite geometric series is k equals 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r fourth and then so on so on so on and people always want to figure out is their proper equation to solve infinite series for whatever value you plug in for ge infinite geometric series so they figured out this way first you times this equation by a random variable let's just times it by r we get rk equals this time we use the imaginary zero again plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth power plus etc and if we subtract this eliminates the infinite series and then we get an equation that actually gives answers so we get k minus rk equals one and then we have to solve the equation we could factor out the k and we get one minus r equal one and then k equals one minus one or minus r and to figure out how this relates to the one minus one plus one minus one to infinity if we plug into a geometric series, it's 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. Plug in the number negative 1, you'll see these, if you plug, in, if you set r equal to negative 1, these two will be equal. And you plug into the equation we had last time, which was k equal 1 for 1 minus r. You'll see if you stick negative 1 here, we get 1, 1 plus 1 right here, which equals 1 half. Though this equation may sound like the best thing in the world, it is faulty, per se. Because, say we set this equation, so let's say we set r to something like 1. So this will give us k equal 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So you'd say this is divergent series, this would equal infinity. But technically, we plug it into our equation here, we'll get k equal 1 over 1 minus 1, which gives us 1 divided by 0. We know that's undefined, which equal undefined. So then we could tell this equation has a fault, which is why this infinite geometric series has barriers, which is any value must be less than negative one uh, less than negative one i mean greater than negative one but less than one any number in between there and then to prove how one minus one plus one minus one squared even equals or one minus two plus three minus four plus five we use a sort of tic-tac-toe method per se for like tic-tac-toe cross multiplication system so first, let me draw it out. And then these will go infinitely all out on all sides, technically. And then we get 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 
one and then negative one and these will go infinitely on all sides and then uh, to solve it it will be negative one times negative one which will give us one it's basically a pattern of one plus one negative one one negative one one negative one negative one one negative one one negative one 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 i know it's getting pretty boring but anyways let me continue this one negative one one negative one one negative one one negative one one and last row i mean last row column one negative one one negative one one negative one and we start multiplying these out we i mean adding this these out we get one negative two plus three minus four plus five minus six and if we went on infinitely the this squared would equal this so now that we know that, we could take this equation, the negative 3s we had from before, that equals 1 fourth, and then s, so by some simple algebra, we get at, by dividing s, negative 3 on both sides, we get 1 fourth times negative 1 third, which equals negative 1 twelfth. So our equation for 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is actually negative 1 twelfth. I know some people have already done some other videos on this, but I just want to bring it out my own explanation and bring awareness to this interesting equation. Alright, thank you.